The reboot. That term has so many connotations. You say the word and immediately a flood of images stream through your mind. Whether it is movies, television shows, or video games, the reboot has become an inescapable part of our modern entertainment. It's as easy to point at good reboots like Sony's God of War from 2018 as it is to point at disappointing reboots like Sony's Ghostbusters movie from 2016. Is everything a joke to you guys? Just your mama. And staying on Sony for a second, how many cinematic reboots of Spider-Man do you think we're going to get this century? Now, reboots are not the same thing as remakes and sequels, so the great Gears of War 4 is no more of a reboot than all of the woefully underwhelming Alien and Terminator movies that have come out since those respective original sequels. It is nice to meet you. No, a reboot means a reinvention and a fresh start employing elements from the original property that made it great. You know, like Infinity Ward's recent terrific reboot of Modern Warfare, or the seminal work that Retro put into the GameCube's unforgettable Metroid Prime. You could even argue that Nintendo's Super Mario 64 was a 3D reboot of 2D platforming design concepts that it had already perfected for more than a decade. Yeah, the lists of good and bad reboots are long, but that topic I'll save for a future video. Today, I wanted to put together a list of 10 great games that deserve 10 great modern reboots so get comfy hit that subscribe button and let's go Coming in at number 10 is Road Rash. Now this was a fantastic racing game that Electronic Arts put together, premiered on the Sega Genesis with the first original Road Rash cartridge. And it was a game where you hopped on a motorcycle and you bashed at your opponents and you picked up chains and you kicked them. And every once in a while you got trashed and fell off of your bike and had to run back to your bike and get back on it and still try to win the race. There were a couple of sequels that came out on cartridge for the Sega Genesis. There was a 3D version of the game but a lot of the kind of scenarios were very similar all the way across the board. It was still about racing and it was still about getting into combat with the other racers on the track and it was exhilarating. Now, there has been a pretty decent spiritual successor to Road Rash called Road Redemption, which I actually enjoyed. I played that on the Switch and reviewed that not too long ago. But it's not Road Rash, and it's not done with, uh, you know, the kind of full-scale budget that a title like this I, warrants. And I feel like there's so many things that EA has learned over the years with working with studios like Criterion, particularly on the Burnout franchise, that could be re-employed in a modern reinvention of Road Rash. You know, with a, a franchise like Fast and the Furious making so much money in subsequent sequels on screen, I think that there would be a real appetite for a modern retelling of Road Rash, and EA is squandering that franchise. Now, number nine is a bit of a cheat because it's three giant monster games and we could take any one of these franchises and redo them. We've got Rampage, the 1986 Midway arcade classic. King of the Monsters, which came out in 1991 from SNK. And we've got the 2003 PlayStation 2 classic War of the Monsters. All of these games have gotten sequels or re-releases. They've all been dabbled with over time, but there has been no perfect modern recreation of this idea of giant monsters battling each other and hurtling through buildings, and maybe they're fighting giant robots. And I know there's been attempts, but there hasn't been that definitive giant monster fighting experience. <laughs> These old classic 2D games and even War of the Monsters, which I think got closest, they didn't really nail the scale as much as they could have. And I think what's been limiting for all of these titles is the hardware hasn't been up to speed for the idea. Now we have no, there are no blockades and it's all up to the developer's imagination. Now, there is one sign of encouragement. We don't know very much about this game, but Platinum Games Project GG, which is gonna be their first self-published title, hints at the idea of giant robots fighting giant monsters. And I'm all in for that. I think that sounds incredible, but honestly, I would be happy with any kind of a modern reboot on any one of these franchises. They're all great fodder for fantastic video game fun, and they have provided, these games have provided lots of fun over the ages. It's just time for a real reboot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Coming in at number eight is the classic F-Zero, which came out in 1990 for the Super Nintendo, and then there were subsequent sequels on the N64, and of course there was that terrific game developed by Sega for the GameCube F-Zero GX, which was blisteringly fast and beautiful, and the frame rate was incredible, and it felt like your eyes were melting out of your head when you were playing the game. There's just something aesthetically wonderful about F-Zero that could really be tapped into. I do feel that it would be time to innovate with some of the gameplay choices. Maybe there would be some out-of-vehicle type sequences. I don't know, maybe it's a little bit more open world. Maybe it's an F-Zero Grand Theft Auto type of experience. You could whip around inside of a futuristic city, or maybe there is some weapon combat as an option for the gameplay. But I know there are F-Zero purists out there that just want to race and just want to see what their time attack scores are like. And they just want the traditional core experience. And all of that should be employed in a modern reboot for sure. And we've been waiting for a long time, Nintendo, so get to it! Number seven is the Dreamcast classic that came out in 2000, Jet Grind Radio, or Jet Set Radio, as it was retitled. Jet Set Radio! There was also an Xbox sequel, Jet Set Radio Future, which came out in 2002. Both of the games are wonderful. The first game has been re-released in several different incarnations over the years on several different platforms, including phones. It has stood the test of time because it was so ingenious. It was so clever with its fusion of great colors and wonderful aesthetic and cool music and the idea that you've got to go run around and tag with graffiti all over the walls and upset this authoritarian regime that's out to get you, all of these coppers that are chasing you don't have fun it was just really edgy and cool and unique and also a little frustrating because the controls back in the day were a little insurmountable you really had to kind of give this game some patience and once you did all kinds of great rewards started to pour out of the experience and you really saw how original and how fresh and how fun this this game, which became a franchise, really was. But it's been a long time since we've re-explored this world. And Sega, you know, you have a lot of fantastic treats up your sleeve. Lots of great games that you could revisit or share with other developers. And I think that this would be a fantastic game. If you're not going to, you know, develop something new with it yourselves, maybe there's a developer that you could partner with that's a huge fan of this franchise that could really do something wonderful with this game. Yeah! Definitely worth a re-examination and a nice modern-day reboot. Number six is a PlayStation 1 classic, Blood Omen Legacy of Cain, which came out in 1996, developed by Silicon Knights in partnership with Crystal Dynamics. And I know that there was an ugly lawsuit around this franchise between Silicon Knights and Crystal Dynamics, which sucks, and I'm, I'm sure it's kind of muddied the waters for Crystal D and Square Enix and everybody to kind of think about what they would do with it, but it's been a long time. That original PlayStation 1 game, Blood Omen, was so cool and so creepy and dark and mature and you know the storyline that it presented was so groundbreaking for its time and it was cool that it was an action RPG that had a distinct North American idea of what an RPG could be and it really gave you some moral choices and you could be as evil as you wanted to be in that game playing a vampire and you could just walk up to people and kill them and suck their blood <laughs> Then it was tweaked and iterated on in, a, in some wonderful ways for the follow-up Soul Reaver, which was also an incredible foray into 3D action platforming mechanics and some really groundbreaking stuff there, technically and visually. <laughs> Dennis Dyack, who is a giant in the video game industry, and has developed lots of cool games over the years, uh, Eternal Darkness, and Amy Hennig, who was at Crystal Dynamics at the time, kind of got to chaperone this, and even though there was conflict and some issues between these two, and it wasn't a beautiful partnership in all senses of the word, some beautiful work came out of that partnership, and, you know, they're both seminal figures, Amy and Dennis, and I just would love to see a lot of their babies, a lot of their creations from that time revisited and rebooted. Not remastered, not remade. That would be fun too, but like a whole new take on what this franchise could be for modern machines. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh.
Number five is SSX. Now, this is something that I've talked extensively about with the series creator Steve Reckshafner over the years, but SSX has been a gaping hole in our industry for a long time. 2012 was the last kick at a, uh, an SSX reboot, and it was pretty good. It was technically really incredible, but it was missing a lot of the joy and that effortless kind of fun and the sass that the original SSX, and particularly by the point of SSX3, which came out in that PS2 era, was also on the GameCube and the Xbox. Thankfully, SSX3 is backwards compatible. The Xbox, one, the original Xbox SSX3 is backwards compatible on Xbox One architecture, and it's all up res to 4K on Xbox One X, and it's stunning. But we need a real reboot that takes us back into that era, into that world with the funky music and the DJ and that sort of free flow experimentation and that sense of fun and those wacky characters and it doesn't have to relive that time frame and it doesn't have to sort of re-employ all that music but it has to get us to that with a modern equivalent however they do it i think there has to be it's, it's almost like whoever goes back and says look we want to make a game as good as ssx you know or tricky or three they've almost got to go to ssx school and reverse engineer not just the mechanics but the flow the fun of those games they were incredible it was the best news that the playstation 2 launch got in 2000 when the original ssx launched they're woefully missed and i can't wait until somebody works with ea and picks up the baton and either makes us a true blue ssx game a new one or a spiritual successor that lives up to that pedigree Number four is Crimson Skies, and if you've been watching EP for a while, you've heard me talk about this year after year. There was a great PC game that came out in 2000, but there was an even better, incredible, seminal experience on the original Xbox that came out in 2003. This was a game about Nathan Zachary and the Fortune Hunters, where they were basically taken on air pirates and taken out blimps and flying over this alternate history, all these urban areas and rural areas and caves and doing cool dog fighting types scenarios and jumping out of your planes and jumping into turrets and taking out all kinds of bad guys pulling off great stunts and tricks and upgrading your aircraft we are authorized to seize your property under the david dunbar anti-piracy act nathan protect the crates beautiful visuals beautiful sense of community with its online those are some of my favorite memories playing games online ever i don't know what microsoft has been doing with this franchise they've been sitting on it forever and i think what's so cool about this particular game for the original xbox especially is that it benefited from all of the world building that went into the tabletop game jordan wiseman who was the inventor of the crimson skies franchise really labored to put something that honored you know that sort of adventurous 1930s serial aesthetic. It was definitely influenced by Raiders and the Indiana Jones franchise. You could feel that. It was seeping in through all of the sepia-toned edges of all the cut sequences that were part of these games. It's a gold mine, you know? Microsoft and whoever develops this is sitting on something that can be perpetual and can be crazy amounts of fun, particularly with the modern technology that exists for multiplayer play. Imagine a battle royale game set in the Crimson Skies universe. Now, number three is a bit of a cheat again. It's Super Star Wars, but of course there were three Super Star Wars games that came out for the Super Nintendo, published by JVC and developed by Sculptured Software. 92, 93, and 94. We got Super Star Wars, Super Empire, and Super Return of the Jedi. They're all 2D side-scrolling games, platforming action adventure, a little bit of run and gun type stuff. And they were crazy fun, but they were also crazy difficult and frustrating, but there was so much cool stuff in there. The John Williams music. The cast of characters that you got to play from all of the movies, all of these different little elements that were such beautiful fan service. So here's what I want out of a modern reboot. I want the whole Skywalker saga, all nine movies in one game. Not unlike what Lego is doing with the Skywalker saga with their game, but imagine a side-scrolling, legit Super Star Wars game, the Skywalker saga that takes us through the course of all nine games, lets us play with all of these different characters, but hones the mechanics so that the game plays like the messenger or dead cells you know modern day very clean very accessible mechanics that are incredibly satisfying and incredibly addictive really hard to put down but you get to play as all of these characters and here's
here's the kicker. You get Rogue One as a bonus hidden game inside of your Super Star Wars. Well, now there's a 35% chance of I failure. I don't want to know. Thank you. I understand. So there you go. There's your design document in video form. LucasArts, watch this video and pay some awesome developer like the guys that made The Messenger to make this game for us. We will go freaking nuts for it, and it would be so fun to play as all of these different characters across all of these eras of Star Wars. Now, number two is another Super Nintendo game. It's Earthbound, which came out in 1992. It's based on the Japanese franchise Mother. People have been asking for this for a long time. I would love a reboot of Earthbound. It was a terrific Super Nintendo game. It was an RPG set in kind of present day America at the time with a lot of satirical content, you know, lots of whimsy and a lot of great characters. And, and the idea that, you know, you get into RPG battles with different types of characters like greasers at the pool hall kind of thing. And then if you win your battles, your dad would send you money and then you could go to an ATM and pull out the money and use it to, you know, keep going along your adventure, which was to kind of investigate this meteorite crash in the in the suburbs that you lived. Ness, the, the lead character of Earthbound, has become this really important character, particularly with his appearances in the Smash Brothers franchise. This is a beloved franchise that Nintendo has been sitting on for a long time. Now, they've re-released the game in a number of different ways over time, which is great, but it's not enough, you know? This is a game that people love for a reason. It's not just for its quirky charm. It's not just because it's unique. It's because it's good, and it's definitely worthy of revisiting, and it's definitely worthy of, you know, a Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild style and scale reboot. You know, like, let's reimagine the whole thing and present it to us for today. I think people would go absolutely crazy for that, and they would also go back and re-explore and re-examine the history, you know? I think Nintendo's got another fantastic, massive role-playing franchise sitting there waiting for this inevitable reboot, and I can't wait till that does happen. Now for my vaunted number one on this list. It goes to the 1982 classic Konami game, Time Pilot. And I've talked about this quite often. I talked with Yoshiki Okamoto, who was the designer of this game. Time Pilot is a game that has really stood the test of time, and no pun intended. You know, I thought about a lot of other 80s and 90s arcade games that I love, like Robotron, A Defender, and Smash TV. All of those games made by Eugene Jarvis, by the way, the master. Uh, but those games, I think in particular, work as well today as they did back in the day. So it's almost like they're so good they don't need a reboot. But Time Pilot, as great as it is to revisit and play the classic 82 game, and I know that there was an Xbox 360 live arcade game that modernized the graphics, but it was basically the same game. But imagine if Konami said, we want to build something that lets you jump from era to era, but it's in 3D and almost employs a little bit of that Crimson Skies tactile accessibility in full three dimensions so you could do all kinds of great barrel rolls and loop-de-loops and fly through 3D space. And then, you know, it gets zapped into another era and you could keep going, you could go into different planets, you could go mythological and hop on the back of dragons. Anything would be possible with this game. Time Pilot is just sitting there ready to get re-examined and remade, rebooted for people, and I think it would be massive and so much fun. And, I, and also you could throw in multiplayer, and so you could play Time Pilot against all kinds of different people that are playing with different aircraft from all kinds of different times. Make this game! Oh my god, I want that so bad. <laughs> So there you go. There are my 10 games that I want to see rebooted, but I also had a bunch of suggestions. I posted on Twitter what game needs a reboot, and I had hundreds of replies, and I wanted to uh, just give 10 different shout-outs to different ideas and different tweets that I got back. So from Kevin Skinner, he said, Perfect Dark again. That would be a fantastic thing to see happen. It would be great for Rare to be given the reins on making us a brand new Perfect Dark one more time. I would be down for that. Got a suggestion from Bill Roper, who made Hellgate London. He says, Hellgate London. Nina07 suggested Zombies Ate My Neighbors from the Super Nintendo era and Star Fox. I would love a new Star Fox game for sure, and they could reboot the whole concept, the whole idea. That would be great. Also a Zombies Ate My Neighbors game. I would be down for that in a big way. 
the IV Adumi suggests Republic Commando, and now with the last season of The Clone Wars just hitting Disney+, Plus, this would be a perfect time to re-explore those incredible clone troopers. Maybe we get to play as the Bad Batch in a uh, modern reboot of Republic Commando. That would be pretty damn rad. I'd like that idea very much. A lady named uh, Marissa Roberto suggests SUNSHINE in all caps, and I think she's talking about Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Sunshine. Love that freaking game. It would be great to get that rebooted. So basically a re-envisioning of what was presented in that GameCube classic with modern technology. I think that would be wonderful, but of course we don't just want that same game again. We want something brand new and, you know, with all the learnings that have come in the Mario franchise since that time, that would be great. <laughs> DJ Galvanese has another Nintendo franchise that they would like to see rebooted. Of course, I think this is a great idea. It's Diddy Kong Racing, one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games of all time. Been a long time since we've seen anything from the Diddy Kong franchise, and we are overdue. A reboot of that franchise, I am all for. Make that happen, Nintendo. <laughs> Zets44 suggests Rock and Roll Racing, which was a classic Super Nintendo title developed by Blizzard, an overhead game with rock music from the day. It was super cool, and it would be pretty interesting to kind of take that franchise and see what developers could do with something like that in 2020. I would I would be all for that. Maybe even, you know, give Blizzard a break from all of this massive world building that they do and let them build something just crazy fun and accessible like that again. That would be great. Let the carnage begin! Hitmon Brand suggests KOTOR, and I think that this was suggested many times on my tweet replies, and I think that this is happening. I think that we are getting a reboot of the Old Republic in lots of different ways. Of course, people can still play the massively multiplayer online game, which keeps expanding, and that's been an incredible success for Bioware and for EA and for Lucasfilm. But yeah, it's time to go back to the Knights of the Old Republic, and I think it's got to be a little bit of a remake slash reboot. Like, approach it differently but employ a lot of the learnings and a lot of the lessons that were part of the original game and its sequel, and definitely we need to see a lot of those characters again, but this definitely has to happen. And Jai Taiyu suggests Panzer Dragoon Saga, which was one of the uh, coolest Sega Saturn games. I freaking adored that game. And I wasn't even at that time, I wasn't really like a huge Japanese RPG guy, but I was just overwhelmed by the beauty and the majesty of the world that was crafted for me and all of these different dragons that I could meet. It really kind of was a, a foreshadowing of what Fumito Ueda did with his Eco and Shadow of the Colossus and Last Guardian games. It really kind of had that that moody, atmospheric, beautiful kind of vibe to it. And I know that Sega's got a Panzer Dragoon game coming out for the Switch in the not-too-distant future, but it would be great to get a Saga game, a Panzer Dragoon Saga game rebooted. That would be wonderful. And finally, from user Fanatically Sick, they suggest no reboots, only original games. You know, I think I would be okay with that too, but... There are so many great franchises out there. There's so many great titles and great original and, you know, wonderful ideas that as we move forward through time, they just get further and further into the distance. And sometimes it's great to go back and kind of reimagine everything that was capable with these ideas, but with modern technology and modern design ideas. You know, I can get behind the idea of no reboots and always originality, and maybe we lean on that too much, and maybe there are lots of games and lots of movies and TV shows that we can point at that didn't deserve to be rebooted or weren't rebooted properly, but I still, as much as I can empathize with the concept of no reboots, I gotta say, I've loved a lot of them, and there, I think there are still tons of games out there that deserve a brand new reboot for sure. Okay, you guys, that is going to do it for this feature. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, if you like our channel, please hit that subscribe button and that little bell. Share this video with all your friends, and if you like it, hit that thumbs up. Let us know some of your ideas in the comments below, some of the games that you would like to see rebooted. We're going to see you very soon, and until then, play forever.